Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts. It's Scooby Doo Tuesday, guys. You know what that means? Of course, it means we're here continuing the journey of Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated. This is season two, episode fourteen. Heart of Evil. Interesting. Interesting. Heart of Evil. Is this implying someone has a heart of evil? I'm thinking a few people in this show probably does, especially Professor Pericles. But anyways, last week's episode, Wrath of the Krampus, was so insane because it wasn't even really about the Krampus because it wasn't actually Krampus. It was all a ploy to trick the older Mystery Inc., who of course have reformed without Cassidy, and they're going after, of course, the rest of the disc pieces that our Mystery Inc., Scooby and the gang, have... And they tricked them. I cannot believe that last few minutes was insane. How Fred and all of them planned this out to trick all of them to get away from their lair, the lair, Mr. E's lair, for hot dog water to go in to steal the pieces and the pieces they stole out of the mystery machine, Fred's parents. Those were fake pieces. It was so insane. People were pointing out, look at Professor Pericles. Look how dumbstruck and how, like, insane his brain is like rattling with like how the hell did they pull this off it was so well done it was so well done and the krampus thing they were like oh we can use this to our advantage you we're gonna steal the disc pieces not realizing that they made the krampus they made the monster of the week to trick them it is so good it was such a good reveal it was so insane and you guys are commenting saying this is probably the best episode of the show I mean, I'm hoping there's still amazing episodes like that, but my God, it was so good because I wasn't expecting that reveal. I wasn't expecting that turn. And so now the disc pieces have been formed and the sarcophagus that was that's hidden somewhere under Crystal Cove has now awakened somehow Nibiru. And they were also mentioning too, Velma was like saying that Nibiru is referencing a planet or planet X or something and there's a destruction of the something like what the fuck there's like doomsday shit like what the hell is happening <laughs> this is not Scooby-Doo but it's amazing I can't wait to see what happens next so here we go guys let's jump into this episode episode 14 of season 2 Heart of Evil let's jump into it and see what this shows guys I can't wait let's go flashback quest wait a minute Good shot race. Thanks, Dr. Quest. With a kiss oh my like god. His, a bazooka blast can only be an improvement. Aww. He saved Come on. Life. I know if that were bandit lying there. Welcome to my new humble abode. Humble? Jeepers, Fred. I'm a humble, You're but... living in a van down by the river. You're probably wondering why I've gathered you all together. I wasn't. Mm. Oh, I wasn't. <laughs> I'm just excited to see electric lights again. Nibiru. Nibiru. Oh crap. I was like, there has to be the blue falcon at the beginning. Let's make this dragon oh, This is amazing. This is awesome. Ooh. <laughs> Good dodge, whoa. Eat file. <laughs> With my handy dandy fishing magician. If you kill, you don't, and be still to find it. Okay. That <laughs> was a trick. Or no? Don't even breathe. You're my hero. Yeah. This is awesome. Me and Scoob watch you guys on the news all the time. Put it there, pal. Yeah. Nice. What brings you to Crystal Cove, Blue Falcon? Yeah. We've been tracking that dragon creature in hopes it would lead us to its evil master. But you should know that should I need to sacrifice any of you to get my prey, I'll gladly do it. Oh my god. Just because I'm a cyborg doesn't mean that I'm not a dog's dog. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> a person can't live like this. What's going mm. to happen if someone you care about... But oh. who's still on the fence about you? Mm. Wants to... How'd you get past the encryption? I may not have a bird-themed utility belt and a predisposition for violence, but I do have some mad I skills can, of yeah. my own. I take it you've had dealings with this vile corporation before, and that it's corrupt to its soulless core. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm liking the angles they're using for his fight scenes. This is definitely making this show not Scooby-Doo, really. <laughs> it's making it like a kind of a Batman show. How many security guys do they have here? 
What the hell? Impressive. Why didn't you just ring the bell? Or call ahead for a drive? Well... A guilty man's bones. Finders, keepers, losers, cheapers! We can do this the easy way or the hard way. Terminate with extreme prejudice. Use of deadly force sanctioned. Get away from my file! Eight has put our long-sought prize in my clutches. What? Blue Falcon has discovered I controlled the dragon. But he yes. For at long last, I have discovered the location of the Quest X power source. Wrong mutt. Welcome to Volcano Island. Wrong dog, Falcon. again. Make yourself comfortable. Now, Bobo. Sacrifice anything to save your dog. Wrong dog. But that's not my dog. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, E. No more Mr. Oh God, Shaggy. Okay, there's a tracking device on Blue Falcon's bell. My dog. I'm driving. My dog. There we go. Bye, Mr. E. License plate. Uh, autograph picture of teenage boy. Be strong, my dragon. I now know the dog we're after. <laughs> He's smiling, driving. Here's the Quest X power source. <laughs> and, and this, no. Now calm the crash. I wouldn't be so sure about that if I was you, Sin. Oh my god, <laughs> Shaggy, what? Oh my god, they're actually fighting. Velma? Oh. Shaggy, oh my god. It's time you knew the truth. You oh, save this life. Ordinary but beloved security dog. Are you telling me you're going to power this dog with the most powerful generator on the planet? He's a living thing race. Stealing the Quest X was to be a trial run for my greatest creation. The accident fused the suit to Jenny and has been feeding off of her life force ever since. Oh my god. Goodness gracious, why didn't you say so? Never too busy to help a fellow cyborg with a jump start. Oh my god. Jenny. Oh, isn't that sweet? It's a pity you must all now be destroyed. <laughs> That's convenient. I'll hunt him. I'll find him. I'll find him. I do. Dude, would you give it a rest? This was a fun episode i was not expecting blue falcon and dynamite but that opening scene which was five years ago of like a little flashback which was kind of cool we saw them before they become blue falcon and dynamite i'm thinking is that them and then of course here's dr quest and all that and then there's that dragon robot and then of course dynamite before he comes dynamite he bites on and like electricity and the explosion they save his life then we have that dragon entity, the dragon robot, show up while they're, you know, kind of picking up the pieces after what occurred in last week's episode in terms of Fred now living out somewhere in the woods by himself. And um, Thelma got them all together because she has some sort of like, it's kind of weird, she's <laughs> kind of like a mocked up, you know, messed with version of a, of a, um, a, a, an, a like a, Mm, what's the word? What's the word? Not a disc player. I'm thinking of um, a vinyl reader. That's what I was trying to get to. The word vinyl. That's kind of what she did. And it, of course, started to spin. Wasn't making any noise except typing out Nibiru. So I was like, oh, like that word again. <laughs> like, yeah, of course it is because the disc pieces are referring to Nibiru. So that's a, that's the same word that, that person did. That's the same thing we just looked up last week. <laughs> yes. Then, of course, there's the dragon uh, robot absorbing some sort of power or whatever. And then here comes, out of nowhere, the Blue Falcon and Dynamut. And the dynamic between them in this episode was so interesting. And the way they played the Blue Falcon and Dynamut in this episode in terms of being really polar opposites in terms of their personality. <laughs> because Dynamut was definitely Dynamut. From back in the day, from those classic era cartoons when he appeared. The Blue Falcon, 
I don't remember him being that serious. And I think they really played up the dynamic of them being polar opposites because Blue Falcon is definitely Batman. Definitely Batman without being called Batman. Basically, like, especially when we get to when they go into Destroyed a little bit later and he is fighting rows of guys. Also, Dynamite is too, which I'll get to that in a second in terms of how that went down. The way they were portraying his fight sequences and especially his voice, which by the way, his voice was Troy Baker was the voice of Blue Falcon. I have the voice cast pulled up here just to make sure you get all the names right. Definitely Batman. Definitely Batman-esque. And I think that really worked with the polar opposite of Dino Mutt. Because in the opening, when they're first introduced, uh, when they show up to uh, where Mr. Ink is in the blue, in the blue, the dragon uh, robot, they they immediately show the difference where Dino Mutt's voice is Dino Mutt's voice. And Blue Falcon's like all gravelly and stuff because he's being Batman. And just how Dino Mutt is they're really playing that up like all the different intricate like you know objects and he, he can you know dodge and expand his limbs and all that kind of stuff they really did a good job of showcasing uh that in terms of like some classic feels when it comes to dynamite in terms of his voice of course and then just the things he was doing in the episode it was really funny and then of course we got we got little moments of scooby and dynamite together in terms of like going back and forth talking because really scooby doesn't have a lot of other dogs to communicate with you know, so it's kind of nice for him to actually have a friend, essentially. When they go to Destroido, because of course it ties in, because when Quest Industries or whatever, when that building was bought out by Destroido, of course, Mr. E, it all ties into the power source of of, of, um, of Dynamut, where it's this something X power source or whatever, this power source that then Dr. Zen, who's the one who's operating, which that reveal about who's in the suit, the dragon suit is crazy as hell, but... It was Dr. Zen who, of course, was the one that was behind the dragon suit. I'll get to the reveal later. Um, but, like, that was the whole reason why Mystery bought Quest Industries to get a hold of his power source. And that's the whole doc reason why Dr. Zen was going after it, too. That scene in Destroido, where instead of, like, trying to, you know, collaborate with Mr. Inc. to figure out how to come in. Even though Mr. E, after the fight, goes, you could have just rang a doorbell. You could have just, you know, knocked on the door. It's like, no. They burst it in, explosion, they burst in, and what I like about is, because I had already referenced how Blue Falcon's fight scenes were angled and shot, now, even though I say shot because it's animation, but you know what I'm saying, it's it's basically Batman fight scenes. But then you have Dino Mutt making those really quirky and goofy sounding sound effects, and all the different ways he's like a shield, and like sitting his leg out, and then, pull, then using like a... Um, like a vacuum, essentially like pulling off pieces of the damn building as well. And there was so many guards. How many guards does Destroido need? That's my question. How many do they need? Because they had so many guards who kept just filing out to get attacked. It was great to see that because it was setting up a little bit later where we see Mr. Inc. In, at Volcano Mountain or Volcano Island, no, I, not Mountain, Volcano Island, and they're attacking, and we see some fight with fights with them. But seeing that the difference between Blue Falcon's fights and Tunnel Mutt's fights in that scene in Destroyer's kind of lobby was a great. It was a great scene. It's gonna kind of be kind of hard to edit that, I think, <laughs> because of all the insane stuff that was happening. So after they confront mystery and then unfortunately dr zen confuses scooby and dino Mutt and takes scooby and blue falcon because he's trying to get the power source and realizing the power source from the dog took the wrong dog shaggy's pissed he's holding mystery like, yeah! and like i was like i've never seen shaggy this really upset and he's even like no fred it's my dog i'm driving the uh i'm driving the blue falcon car or whatever the car whatever car it's called the falcon car or something anyways because it came out it came out and they knock over two of the smokestacks <laughs> shaggy ran through those smokestacks like they were nothing that was a funny little moment um so volcano island so we get to this really crazy point where things are getting even more crazy because it's already not feeling like a Scooby-Doo episode because Blue Falcon is making it feel like a Batman show with all the action stuff. Of course, Dino Mutt's like really lightening it up with his stuff too. So it's not like darkness and evil, not evil, but darkness and, you know, broody and all this stuff with Blue Falcon. But then you have Dino Mutt over here who's lighthearted and fun, <laughs> complete opposite. But it's becoming a very different type of episode of the show for sure in terms of like the tone and everything. So when we get to the Volcano Island with Dr. Zen, 
and then we have Blue Falcon, of course, captured, and they're, like, scanning Scooby's, like, body. He ate a license plate and a picture of some teenager boy or something. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And, um, of course, they're flying the vehicle in, Scooby and the gang, um, and Blue Falcon. Not Blue, no, Blue Falcon, sorry, Dynamo was there. Sorry, it's been a crazy day. And then they get there, and they go in, and Shaggy rips off his shirt. He has paint on and shit. Everybody's fighting. Like, Fred and Daphne are fighting together, and then Velma's, like, fucking hitting people. <laughs> now, they cut away from Shaggy. I really wish they didn't. But when they cut back to Shaggy, there's all these mountain of guys just laying on top of each other, knocked out from him. I'm like, what the fuck did Shaggy do here? I don't know why they didn't show. I, I, maybe there was, like, some stuff in the background I missed. But, like, they didn't really focus on him really fighting until, like, he ripped his shirt off, and then it cuts back to him at the end when they save Scooby. Like, oh my god, like, they were actually fighting. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> because Velma's like, well, I'm not prone to violence. Because when she was on Blue Falcon, I was like, well, say, how'd you buy my security things? Um, well, I'm not prone to violence, and I don't do what you do, but I have my own special set of skills. You know, I can break into shit <laughs> on the internet, <laughs> through my computer. But she was fucking going crazy. Going crazy. Um, so it's revealed that Dr. Zen's daughter was somehow attached like her like her whole body was like attached in different parts like with these tubes to the machine that's why he wanted the power source to save her life and then Tom was like well why didn't you say so and he goes over and then heals to the point where she can get out of it and then of course they fly away on jetpacks and the whole thing explodes but then dynamite turns into a uh, <laughs> a lifeboat or a life raft and they you know fly, you know get out of there before the, the gigantic explosion of the whole island of course and Da uh, not Daphne. Cause was, yeah, Velma made the point. How did we not know there was a uh, volcano island right off the coast of Crystal Cove? Like, how did we know that it was kind of over there? <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? This show is fucking weird. Um, so it, 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 some people were commenting saying that this is going to be an interesting episode for sure. Last week, on um, the reaction seems to be interesting for sure, and it was definitely interesting because. I was not expecting Dino Mutt and Blue Falcon, but it was definitely a nice surprise. I really enjoyed it. And uh, the fight scenes was really interesting in terms of like a Batman fight scene and seeing Scooby and the gang. You know, Scooby didn't do any of the fighting, but seeing them show up to save Scooby and Blue Falcon and they're fucking fighting. Oh my God. <laughs> it's kind of crazy how that all worked out. But the, the, the episode became something more. Because this show has had a couple times where a couple episodes kind of break a traditional Scooby-Doo episode, at least in terms of what this show has kind of established. And this is one of those times where it became something more than a Scooby-Doo sh episode. It became more of like a Batman kind of over the top goofy episode with some of the stuff they were doing, but it was good. It was good stuff. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, mystery, you know, of course, once again, mystery is like, you know, doing some shady shit, bought a company trying to get this power source. He kept referring a little bit to, well, I mean, I could have traded some information for a desk piece. <laughs> like, no. Or Professor Pericles. Or any of them. I am guessing we have to wait for that. It's okay, though. Because, I mean, because it really was his company that was the one behind all this, so it kind of makes sense that he was there a tad bit in the episode. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm curious to know what you guys thought about this episode. Let me know in the comments below, guys. I'm curious to know your thoughts. I will talk to you guys soon. Peace out.